Hi everyone! This is a tutorial on how to make a junk journal cover using a cereal box, uh, some fabric scraps, and some scrapbook paper. Um, this is what it's going to look like once we finish, and these are the materials that I used. Uh, we're going to begin by opening up the cereal box and trimming it down to size. I didn't measure when I made this junk journal cover. Um, if you want to measure, um, feel free to do so. Uh, I personally don't like to measure. Uh, and I'm using a, um, a craft cutter from Dollar Tree and a metal ruler to cut it down to size. You could definitely use uh, a trimmer that works on cardstock. However, I find this the easiest way to trim down the cereal box. And I am just removing all the excess uh, pieces of cardboard so that all that I have left are the spine and the covers. Uh, so here I am trimming the last piece so that I can move on to the next step. So once you trim it down, we are then going to cover the cereal box with our decorative uh, pieces of scrapbook paper. Um, so here I am laying down what's going to be the inside of the cover and what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to trace around the outside cover and cut them down to size. And I'm using Fabri-Tac to glue, to glue these down. Uh, later I will be stitching around the borders, however if you use Fabri-Tac you don't really need a sewing machine for this project. For the inside binding, I took some fabric that is for cross stitch and for the outside bound binding, I used some uh, upholstery style fabric um, and I'm also using Fabri-Tac to glue this down. Now an important uh, thing to keep in mind is that uh, you should spread out the Fabri-Tac when you are applying fabric. Otherwise, it can seep through and it'll uh, create like a blotchy effect on your fabric. So I'm just using a cheap brush that I got at Dollar Tree just to spread the Fabri-Tac around and avoid it seeping through the fabric. And for the outside of the book cover, I do want the scrapbook paper to leave a little bit of an excess on the edges because I want to fold it over the edges in order to have a clean edge. So here I'm just using my ruler and my um, craft cutter just to make sure that I have a little bit excess paper that I can fold in once I'm done to have clean edges. One of the things that I'm doing here is that I'm also using the grid lines on my uh, craft mat just to get a straight cut. Uh, so a craft mat definitely helps um, the process of cutting and making sure that you have straight lines. And I'm using this piece that I already cut to size just to cut the other piece of scrapbook paper to the same size. And at this step where I'm gluing the scrapbook paper onto the outside cover, I'm just trying to make sure that the edges that, um, that are excess, that they are more or less the same on all of the sides. Um, so that once I fold them in, it doesn't look 
um, off, but I'm basically just eyeballing it. And at this point, I did realize that um, I did leave quite a bit of excess, so I am just trimming down the excess paper um, and just leaving only what I need. To fold the edges in, I'm just cutting the corners. Um, now, I would caution not to cut extremely close to the corner because it might just leave the corner uncovered. So if anything, I try to leave just a little extra. And I am folding and um, just pressing down the edges before I glue them down. And I'm doing one side at a time just to make sure that I don't feel rushed and that I don't make a mess with the fabric tech. For the fabric that covers the spine, um, I did take off a few um, strings. However, at the end, we're gonna cover up the, the edges with some lace. Um, so here, I'm basically just uh, measuring, uh, well, not really measuring, but laying out where I'm going to glue the fabric that's gonna go on the outside spine. And I like to use the fabric on the outside spine because I feel that it holds the journal together um, better than if I was to apply, let's say, another type of paper um, because I figure that opening and closing the journal is probably going to put a lot of stress on the cover and the spine. And I don't want the covers to come apart. So I'm using the fabric, not just for decorative purposes, but also just to make a stronger uh, journal over time. And so I, as you saw, I glued down the outside, the middle part of the outside spine first, and then I am uh, gluing the sides. And lastly, I'm going to glue the inside. Um, so as you see, um, the bottom part has a seam uh, so that one doesn't really need to be folded. However, on the other part, I will fold it so that it has a little bit of a cleaner finish. At this step, I'm going to add a little bit of lace that I bought at Dollar Tree just to hide the, um, the unfinished edges of the fabric. And I'm going to wrap this lace around to the inside just to make sure that all the edges are covered.
once this lace is glued down, I'm going to go ahead and snip off the excess with scissors. And here is a look at the finished journal cover. I will be continuing this video with a part two on how I put together the signatures and how I bound them into the book cover. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. Please feel free to let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching to the end uh, and take care and God bless.